<clears throat> All right, guys, welcome back. Let me see here if everything is working. Excellent connection. That's what I like to see. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, everything looks good, ready to go. Whew. I feel like I haven't streamed in a lifetime. That's what a three day weekend does to you, I guess. Um, unfortunately, I've been totally off my game this morning. Last week, we didn't have one red day. And today is kind of making up for that, let's just say. Um, I was... <sighs> SPRT, man. I feel like if anyone's red on this, it's almost embarrassing, and I'm red on it. I'm, I'm down $824 on SPRT. It's so bad. And you know, the worst part is, in my mind... I called out all these moves. I was like, perfect move here. I'm gonna go for the entry, look for the breakout. I got shaken out for some reason. I was like, okay, pull back here. It's probably gonna be a stronger pullback. So I don't wanna enter early. For some reason, I pulled the trigger early with like way too big size, got shaken out right before, you know, this nice little move back to the upside. I was like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. Um, and then all these, you know, I just, it was just shake central for me. Um, here's a perfect pullback, but that's somehow I managed to lose money on. I mean, this was a 9% rally here. Um, another extended uh, pullback, which I knew it was going to be probably an extended pullback, kind of like this one. Um, and somehow, again, I lost money um, here. I wanted to do a very quick trade on this one. Somehow I lost money again. Um, here, wanted to sell up 1808, somehow lost money again, got shaken out almost at the perfect low right before the nice little 2% bounce. Oh, I was like, man, SPRT is like, it's really kicking my butt. I think a big reason for that, obviously, besides, you know, being Monday, not really being in any sort of flow. Well, there's two reasons. I think I'm using, you know, a size right now that. You know makes me a little bit edgy because you're down 200 bucks or like let's say two percent which is nothing normal unnormal you know we're down two three four percent all the time but now i'm like down you know pretty much 2x of that in terms of like if i'm down let's say two percent instead of being down let's say 200 dollars, i'm down 400 dollars. so now in my mind i'm like oh i'm down so much i gotta cut my losses i don't know that might be it and then two um, for Monday lead gap or SPRT, I was just not expecting such a fast mover. I mean, this ticker almost never pulls back. And when it does, it's extended or it's a little bit heavy, which makes sense. And I try to plan for that, but then it's a little bit heavier than I planned for. So the, the moves to the upside are super strong and then the pullbacks are super strong. So it's, it's a little bit tricky to trade. The best thing to do would have been just to buy this one and then make breakfast and come back and realize you're up 100%. Um, but I unfortunately didn't do that. That's what I should have done on my first trade when I entered at 4, uh, 47. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit of a headache, this one for me personally, SPRT. It's super thickly traded pre-market, so there's a good chance it's going to be a really nasty open on SPRT. So I'm not even sure if I want to trade it much more going forward. We'll obviously see how it goes, but right now it's just, you know, probably going to be super hectic. Um, you know, 15 million float, 42 million market cap, USA software app company. It looks like they're merging with Greenbridge, uh, which is a BTC miner company. Bitcoin's actually down 3% today. Um, so they're up on merger news, much stronger merger news than I would have expected. I was not really thinking that this ticker was going to be so volatile. Anyway, um, you know, I mapped out some key support and resistance areas. It seemed to hit pretty much every one so far, except we haven't got to the $10 zone yet. Um, and somehow I'm down 800 on it. I, I just... I'm a little bit baffled right now, but you know, it is what it is. Um, it's a little stressful, um, I think, these situations. <sighs> but that's that's trading for you guys. That's trading in a nutshell. You know, sometimes you're, even though you, you feel like you know what you're, you should be doing, your execution is off, right? And that's so far today, my execution has been really off. So I don't know, maybe we'll be able to tighten it up. Maybe not, I don't know. I did one small trade on ACER, but it didn't really amount to much. I bought this pullback here. Um, I was up for a second a little bit, but then it kept on selling off, and then I closed out my position. 
um, the remaining amount um, try to be close it very quickly so it was a scratch up 14 on map one which is in my eyes just a scratch so we'll see where we want to go uh, forward from here appreciate that David <laughs> life says you were missed Aw. Yeah, no, I missed I missed the community too. Although we had a good little chill session in the Discord, so that was that was kind of nice and mellow. Kind of forced me to use the Discord for the day trading a little bit for the kind of the first time because I usually don't talk day trading in the Discord. So that was that was kind of good to get a feel for it a little bit more. Yeah, Jason, that's honestly probably a good idea. Jason says he took the PL off the screen and it completely changed my anxiety levels in a trade. You know, I did, I removed the PL day. I don't know if you guys noticed that. That used to be a big thing. We had the PL day. That's no longer there. But the, yeah, PL open. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not sure if I'm going to remove that one. I also feel like it's kind of important for the stream, but at the same time, you know, what, is that, what does that even mean? Um, not like you guys really care if I'm up or down. Um, plus, we, you know, we show the end of the day P&L anyway. Yeah, maybe I should experiment doing uh, P&L open, removing P&L open. It's not a bad idea. It's definitely something you think about all the time when you're in a trade because it's just this giant, you know, amount sign and you're just like, uh oh, there it is, there it is, you know. Yes, uh, Jason, I, you know, I, you're definitely right. And it helped me a lot when I removed the daily. Because it was, it was nice knowing like, oh, okay, this ticker, you know, I'm not up or down X amount because sometimes that would actually influence an individual trade, which is super um, irrelevant, right? Yeah, maybe I'm going to have to do that. We could actually do it for now. How about that? I'll still have it on my second screen, but it won't be, usually I'm looking at a different stock on my second screen, so I'll have that for now. Nice, yeah, we'll give it a try. It's so windy over here, it's ridiculous. I'm doing a fast today, I'm on a, I'm on almost at 16 hours. No, actually I probably am at 16 hours. I had like a very small dinner last night. Yeah, pretty much at 16 hours. So right now, SPRT is really kind of the main lead gapper here, and it's kind of the lead gapper by far. I usually don't pay too much attention to other stocks that are, you know, anything under 40%. DYAI is at 35%, so it's it's almost warranting some attention because it's, you know, it's one of the most second um, lead gappers at the moment. So it's it's a little bit weird position we're in right now. I do have it written here. Ideally, I'm looking for tickers that are up over 40% pre-market. So there you have it. But this ticker, you know, checks out most boxes, you know, with the 15 million flow, checks this box, has a news catalyst, strong spike history. Let's quickly check it out. Well, not so much. Let's go to the daily. We do have some spikes, a lot of failed attempts, but it's not your classic uh, small cap spiker that you know we traded again and again it has these you know big one or two day spikes 
So not so much strong spike history, no, I wouldn't say so. Good daily room to run for sure. We were talking about this earlier. It actually kind of ran most of it already. Um, it was just going through all these resistance zones. If it breaks 10, I think we could have a nice little run here to around 12 or something like that. So 12.5, 12. Five, 12. So let's keep an eye out for this area. 11.5 roughly is worth noting as well. 15. Maybe there's some interesting stuff here around 14. Some more key levels. It's a little hectic on the, on the weekly chart looking, but when you're on the daily, it kind of clears up again. Those are just key, key, key long-term levels that oftentimes you see a little bit of support. Uh, intraday, you find resistance and support again, and that's why I like to map those areas out. And you can kind of see here, when you zoom in on intraday, they actually hold true very, very well, which makes me feel even more ridiculous for being down so much on this ticker. I, I honestly really don't know how, how I did so bad on this one. Yeah, Nick, that's a really good point. If if SPRT does break eight, it's definitely going to be a bit hectic. There might be a lot of people trying to stop out at that point. Hey, Micah, better better than me. I was up, you know, two hundred, and I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm only up two hundred on it, and then I kept trading it uh, and doing really really bad trades, and now I'm down a hundred and or eight hundred and ten or eight twenty four on this ticker it says PRT. So. I guess it's a good reminder, even if you're up a dollar, at least you're not in the red, right? Let's quickly make sure we haven't missed anything so far news-wise. Miami Beach uh, issues curfew to curb spring break. I, I heard about this. The mayor said the spring breakers are out of control. Space junk is no joke. If you look into it, it's uh, quite a big problem. Again, Miami Beach popping up here. That's just a it's just a fun topic, I think. Definitely some interesting articles here in the New York Times uh, worth diving into a little bit more. I was reading a lot of um, Morning Brew over the weekend and then this morning. Some, some interesting articles for sure. A lot of, a lot of uh, research on NFTs. <laughs> I got so carried away with NFTs I was, there's there's quite a few NFT marketplaces worth checking out. There's Nifty Gate, Super Rare, Rarible, Maker's Place I wrote down, OpenSea. There's a lot of a lot of different ones. I wanna kinda of create an account at all of them and just see how it works. Um, still so much for me to learn, but the concept's kinda of becoming uh, much clearer now. I still kinda of wanna, 
dive into a little bit more in terms of just buying maybe something that's cheap just to get it a little bit more see how it's stored etc that that really helped me understand crypto a lot more years back once i you know owned my own crypto my own wallet and, it, and then you know set up a miner i was like ah okay okay i get it a little bit more now you see this uh gamestop q1 drops tuesday Facebook is working on Instagram for kids under 13. I, 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 that just sounds stressful. This is really unfortunate here. Kent Taylor, the CEO and founder of restaurant chain Texas Roadhouse, died by suicide Thursday following battle with COVID post related symptoms. I, I read this whole article, it was actually, you know, pretty sad. Quite, quite a good guy, that Kent Taylor. Cases are going down, it's good. Worldwide, there's a massive surge go going on though. Where are those, where are those new surges coming from? Jamie says, check out Wolfie. Uh, actually, I haven't heard of it, so I'll have to check it out. I gotta look into this a little bit more where this giant search came from. I was not aware about that. Thanks, James. Yeah, interesting seeing that, David. I had no idea it was so bad over there. Well, I just saw Daniel's question. Um, Daniel, we're using VWAP. We're using uh, the blue line up here is the nine EMA exponential moving average. Uh, and that's pretty much it, the VWAP nine EMA. On my daily chart, I like to use the 180 day simple moving average as well as the nine EMA. So SPRT is definitely what everyone's going to be watching at the market open. 
At this point, I would be super stoked if I could just go green back on the day, um, but I'm gonna have to be very, very careful because I'm literally pretty much a hundred or two hundred dollars away from being totally stopped out. Like you guys know, going down ten percent of my oops, I just opened a lot of stuff here on accident. Um. I just got totally lost my train here. Ah, yes, stats. Because as you guys know, when I'm down 10% of my average position size, um, which for this month, which, uh, let's see here, this month, uh, and then unlimited account, should be right around 9.4. So I'm actually $150 away from being stopped out for the day. So I gotta be very, very careful here right now. How's everyone's weekend? You guys do anything exciting? I pretty much chilled most of the weekend pretty pretty hard. Yeah, nice move here on WIMI, not too bad. My problem with this one is just this huge resistance here. Let's see why this one's up. Obtain patterns for optical holography wave cam generate to accelerate LIDAR industry application for a 3D hologram pulse LIDAR. Holographic pulse liner. Yeah, maybe if we see a little bit more action here, but you know, it's having some decent moves. Rate of change is a little bit slow. I'll definitely put an alert on this one. Bigger resistance at nine and then 10 again. All right, I'm gonna get a T quickly and then I'll be right back. But remember guys, always, Always focus on whatever strategy works best for you. Just because I'm not looking at a ticker doesn't mean, you know, it's not a good ticker to trade or anything like that. Just, you know, based on my strategy, which today is doing really bad, um, it just isn't for me, right? So just always keep that in mind. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm ending my fast today right now because I have no, I'm realizing my energy is very low, so I got to eat something here, especially if we're about to start streaming. Um, got another three and a half minutes. Mm, not super, Brent, um, but COVID is definitely up very high. And big congrats, man. Brent says he got vaccinated for the weekend. This weekend, that's huge. I'm jelly. Awesome, man. That's really good to hear. All right, sorry I'm shoving my face right now, but trading pre-market, I could be, you know, very chill. I don't have to think about too much. But once I'm streaming, I realize if I have energy or not. And I realize this fast isn't going to last this stream. Oh, yeah, I believe it, Bren. And heck yeah, Corey. I want to have a bounce back day. We'll see what happens. OCG is the ticket from last week. Uh, NFT play. We were talking about this one maybe being a good potential buy as it comes back to the 9 EMA, which we're definitely approaching right now. I think it'd be worth keeping an eye on for a potential swing trade. All right, guys, good luck, everyone. Uh, 50 seconds here to the market opens. I'm going to be very calm into this market open. I think SPRT is extremely extended. We have maybe moved till 10. 15 million market cap, so we'll see. I mean, float. So 50 million flow can create some good spike ability. Maybe it's going to get halted. 42 million market cap has merger news. So we'll see how it plays out. Just uh, calm and collect it for now. Good luck, everyone. There's kind of that Spike to the downside, I was thinking we might see. Mm, but it's kind of holding there. 5 minute, this looks like a pretty nice flag pattern. Got that resistance at 9. You see that big flag right here? But to me, it's still extremely extended, up 280%, so I just wanted to be a little bit careful. 
markets right now pretty much at break even besides the Nasdaq up 0.8% almost. Not a lot of tickers to pick from today, so usually it means we're gonna have some clean moves somewhere. Let's see, SNCA, just because there's not a lot to choose from, so traders are really focused on at least one thing. And SPRT, I think a lot of people are nervous on, so I think SNCA might be kind of an interesting pick here, but it looks like it might be lacking some catalyst. I'm not sure why this ticker's up. Thirty million market cap, seventeen million float. I'm not seeing catalyst though. SPRT still selling off right now below 7.5. I'm really nervous with SPRT because once this thing really breaks 7.5, you know, you just don't know how fast it's going to fall from there. You might find bigger support roughly at 7. But in the meantime, SNCA, I'm just kind of. You know, watching this one, it, it didn't trade very nicely uh, pre-market, but it's not a lot to think about right now. So this might be more of an interesting play. Next to resistance, I would probably argue they're in 3.6, but I don't know if we're going to get all the way up there. SPRT is kind of consolidating here. Four minutes into the open. I don't know. I don't know. What are we going to get? Is SPRT still going to reach the seven zone where we might jump on it at one point about a 12 percent dip hasn't halted so it's more interesting for me to want to trade this one maybe on a dip otherwise i'd be too nervous to trade this one on the back side. and CA making actually pretty sweet moves. I'm watching SBRT, seeing how it deals with this $7 zone coming up. Doesn't seem like SNCA should really, there's any real reason beside, you know, being up today besides, you know, people not totally sure what else to trade. Two five, interesting spot, and then again here at two seven. So let's keep an eye out for these areas.
I'm watching SPRT. Is he going to crack the seven? Anyone trading SNCA? I'm a little undecided on that ticker. I wanted to kind of pull the trigger on that pullback around, I don't know, 240, 235, but I didn't. Right now it has a reverse hammer, kind of nasty looking. There's been some really strong flushes on it as well. Let's see how SBRT holds up here because we've had a great bounce off of seven before. Not sure if we're gonna get that again. Now I gotta be thinking right now because if I traded pre-market good, I would probably be up quite a bit this morning because I traded pre-market really bad. Now I'm kind of thinking, you know, maybe I should trade to get you know back in the green, um, as opposed to if I was already in the green, I'd probably be like. Nothing really looks that good right now, so I probably just shouldn't trade. So I'm trying to keep that in mind a little bit. Obviously I want to trade and I'm looking for good setups. I just don't want to unbiasedly rush into anything. So I'm trying to you know, be a little calm here. This Monday market open. SNCA actually had a really nice bounce just now. A little 3% pop, that's really not too bad. For SPRT being up around 250% and almost 300% pre-market, it's actually holding its highs pretty well at the open. Yeah, it sold off, but it didn't really sell off that much. Around 12%, it's really not that bad. MRKR looking kind of interesting as well. Kind of a snoozer pre-market, but now it's a little, getting a little bit more consistent. Or two interesting resistance, four dollars interesting resistance. SPRT broke that critical seven zone, flushed all the way down to six eight. Still only down about 14% from the opening price on SPRTs. It's really not that bad.
eh, not a lot of good opportunities right now. I saw DSS being called out. Actually kind of interesting, possible upside of 5.5 five on DSS. Just very light volume, very slow. It's not on my scanners because it's not up over, what is it, 15%, on 10, 10, 15% on the day. Hmm. <laughs> There's not a lot to do. Yeah, uh, sometimes it's good to remind yourself, you know, you don't have to trade, don't have to touch anything. There's obviously some opportunities. Right now SNCA's big support here at 228 on the 5 in as well. See if we can go long this one. See if it breaks into twenty three territory. A little of a bounce, maybe. Still a decent sell off there. Let's see if we can get some size here at 23. A lot of buyers there at 23. I'm not sure if we're going to break it. We might break it for a second. Let's see if I can move up to 24. That's yeah, so actually okay, little bounce. Looks like I missed my trade. Even if I left it at 23, I don't think I would have got filled. I would have had a probably front run at 24. So I, I'm not really having too much FOMO right now. I don't feel too much like I missed that entry. I don't think I would have got it no matter what. Watching SPRT, my second screen. It's on the backside move. You got to be really careful here. This is where you could just chip away profits or just dig yourself in a big hole. Backside moves are not not fun if you're trying to predict the reversal. No trades yet from me since the uh, market opened. So I'm just gonna get back to breaking my fast. HOFV being called out. I'm usually not the one to trade a ticker like STON that just kind of pops out of nowhere like this, but you know it's it's trading all right. It had its halt.
I don't see any news on this ticker. SPRT guys coming back right now. Twenty percent move plus. Oops, day. You got to be aggressive on SPRT. Uh, I noticed uh, it moves to the upside quick. But it pulls back very strong. So you want to get aggressive. Then you want to take your profits ideally in, in green momentum. I didn't have my time of force yet corrected, so I tripped over myself just now. Could have made it maybe a small profit on that last one. <sighs> I don't like usually when the left shoulder is a flush. It makes me a little bit nervous. Could be a little bit of a support grab here at 45. Let's see if we can get along this one. Oh, just missed it. HOFV, that was just a hair too slow. Man, today I've been missing so many trades um, and then somehow getting caught into a lot of bad ones. Oh well, it is what it is. I came to the party a little bit late on HOFV. I'm gonna keep an eye on it though. I like the fact that it's the third biggest gapper based on dollar volume. Nice bounce on SNCA as well. slow slow all right can't deny it SPRT is definitely back in the game here great bounce on HOFV congrats to anyone that got that bounce I sure didn't oh crack Sorry to hear, Steven. That's always extremely frustrating. Luckily, I you know I just didn't get my fill. That's a good book view up. Read that one. Nice, Jonathan. That was like, that was a, such a clean move too. Six percent bounce. That was that was a freaking money shot right there. SPRT looks like it could go back to like 7.5 real fast. It's making me a little bit nervous on it. Went to 8. 6% down.
this PRT is holding this area kind of okay, but I just I couldn't get I'm not gonna get on it just yet. Yeah, SPRT uh, did a really good pullback just now. I, I got skunked so many times on pullbacks on this ticker, so... Oh, man, I got to really watch out. I'm pretty much one trade away from being stopped out, so I got to be really, really careful and try to build a cushion and march my way back into the green. But at the moment, you know, I'm just not really sure if this is the right moment for that. <clears throat> It's holding another 20 seconds in this minute. Back above eight. New minute starting now. Let's watch it. Could be moved back higher here. 841. Could be a turning point. Let's watch it. Possible small size here at eight. Let's see if we can get some fall through. Looking for that move over 840. I was like, why is my pri my PL not showing? I just remembered we turned it off for today. Selling off here. Yeah, it's taking a little bit longer than expected. But it's a tricky ticker, this one. That first run was about 25%. Let's see if we can get another pop there. A lot of a lot of buyers here on this one right now. Looking for the no one more move. Taking profits there. 866. Nice, about 50 cents a share on that one. That was a 7% move. Smaller position size, though. But we needed to take a smaller position size because I didn't want to stop myself out. So that was a clean trade. That was about a $500 trade. Mmm, nice bounce there to 9.3. New hive day. Try to go long there at nine oh five, didn't get my fill. A lot of people jumping on this one right now. Probably breaking 9.3 any second. My original goal was to jump on this one and sell for a break in 9.3, but somehow I'm, I'm not on it, so I'm just watching. 
Yep, I'd be taking profits. I would have made a small trade out of that one, base it. HOFV, guys, is totally in the play right now. Possible trade on HOFE as well, looking at it at 848. SBRT is kind of interesting in this area. It's a little bit shaky of a flag pattern. New minute in pretty much 15 seconds. goes ah, there's the sell off to nine 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 two actually oh just missed my HOFV entry by one or two cents Gonna remove that limit order for now. I can't focus on two tickers at this moment. Especially a fast one like SPRT, it's a little bit tough. New minute starting any second now. Long and 91. Another size there, 1600. Full size at 89. Looking for a move over 95. Not sure if we're gonna get it. Put a sell order at 9.3 just in case. It's a quick spike. A lot of sell orders there. I'm gonna give it one more attempt. No, it's not really making it. Nine dollars acting as some sort of support. Cell volume hasn't been dropping on these candles, so that's a really good sign. Maybe we'll get a move here. Sold half size. Well, actually. Sold again there at 19. I don't know why, but I was losing my trust in this ticker like by the second. So I'm gonna eat my All right, salt sticks with peanut butter fillings. They're absolutely amazing. So I was down $820. And now I'm up $170 in two trades with smaller size. 
Well, that was a roller coaster of emotions. Thanks, guys. I'm just opening the chat for the first time in a little bit. Jason, I think I'm going to have to credit those two wins a little bit to you because, I don't know, maybe I would have gotten shaken out on SPRT again if I had the P&L um, day. Although I think for the viewer, it's probably nice to see how much I'm up on a specific trade. On the SPRT, the first one, I, was, I made about 500, and then the second trade, I probably made around 400, mm, maybe a bit more. But, yeah. Thanks, Bren, for uh, answering some questions there. Yeah, the best thing anyone could do is, uh, if, you're, if you're not aware of what's going on, just watch. We also have a whole entire 100% free foundation video series right here. If you go to the link, tradejournal.co forward slash connect, you can find a bunch of more stuff there to learn and study so you're ready for the market open with us. I'm pretty happy I'm back in the green, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, I was I was pretty in the green, and then I gave it all back, and then I kept on giving it back on SPRT, just trading it really poorly. So it's half of this is just you know being happy that I'm not making I didn't make two more bad trades. Honestly, more than anything, it's it's sometimes I'll be more happy on a red day than I am on a green day, because I put more a lot of value on the quality of my trading. So if if my trading is bad and I had a green day, I, I oftentimes don't even feel that good. But if I had a red day, you know, I uh, managed my risk, I cut my losses, we just didn't get the follow through I was hoping for, and at the end of the day, I don't know, down one, two, three percent of my average position size, I'll be like, you know what, whatever, like, I did good trading today, and the fact that I'm not green today is, is totally fine, because today was just not a good environment for my strategy. But pre-market was a good environment for my strategy, and I did bad trading. So I was kind of, you know, down because of that. <sighs> SPRT could be an interesting uh, setup here. This could come back to VWAP pretty quickly, but I would, at the same time, I feel like I'd rather wait for one more sell-off, maybe. I'm not sure if we're going to see that. It's definitely struggling to make moves higher. Maybe small size here. I found support at that 39 just now. I don't know if you guys saw that. Let's see if it bounces back higher or cracks lower one last time. Nope, found that support. Boom, I don't know if you guys saw that. It was right in the order book. You can kind of see it. It hit it and it made a higher low, but all these are backside moves. This could be, I mean, right now it's a backside move, so I'd be very careful. I wouldn't overstay my welcome if I was trading SPRT. HOFE is about to make a new high of day. This one looks really interesting. I 
Do, 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 do. Oh, SPRT, there it goes. There's the crack I was so nervous about. This is tough right now. HOV, HOFV, I was just about to trade. Um, five minute, there's a bit of a flag setup maybe. Obviously an entry closer to VWAP would be favorable. I don't know, it's, it's, it's a hard call. SPRT, I was thinking about doing a little bit of a dip trade there on this one. SPRT is holding though the highs very well like if you just started trading this ticker at the market open you probably think it's you know all over the place kind of you know huge resistance but look how well it's ho holding this high here it dipped off a little bit around 12% from the open now it's back and now it's really just really close to where the open price is so it's holding this area quite well consolidating there's gonna be a great second leg on this one so we had a first leg, we had the consolidation, we had a bit of a shakeout, and now we might be getting started on that second leg, who knows? Nice, Jason. Yeah, Brent, I kind of feel the same way. Uh, you know, good point. And it could be a bit of a trap. Brent, do you use do you use open? Do you use the daily open, or do you just not show your P and L? Oh boy, H O F E just had the breakout I was waiting for. Small size on this one, possibly. long HOFE yeah my second screen shows me my P&L and I just I just realized I was staring at my P&L on HOFE while the second screen doesn't show it or the main screen that you guys see doesn't show it and I'm absolutely just focused on the order book Sometimes these decisions, should I have PL open or should I not have PL open, are a lot to think about because, like, trying to take some profits there, 24, closed out. Because whatever decision you make in a year from now will probably have you know, thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars worth of consequences to the upside or downside, you know? But based on how I performed on those last two, three trades, PL open definitely is a distraction for sure. SPRT now at that critical VWAP zone. 
Yeah, v, uh, VWAP, that's a stressful situation. My problem with the flatten is the sell at market order. It's, it's stressful for sure. HOFE is on a really nice uptrend, bigger resistance right around, I'd probably argue 5.8 to 6, but 5.5, five, you know, 5.5 seems to be always a really big spot psychologically, so I would probably consider marking that area as well. Nice bounce there off of VWAP, SPRT. I was even calling that one out earlier today. I don't know why I didn't trade it just now. HOFV also kind of an interesting spot. My problem with HOFV is just kind of how it moves. Sometimes I don't really trust it. Five million float. The last news on Finviz was on the tenth, but it has new news today. Potential NFT play. Yeah, we were looking at this one on Friday. A lot of these sports NFTs, I think, are some of the better ones, honestly. The NBA, for example, National Basketball Association is going all in on NFTs. So just remember that. It seems like that and art are pretty big. HOFE might might keep running here till 586, um, but again, you know, I, I wanted to call out the 55 zone as well because that's always a bit of a psychological zone. HOFE NFT means non fungible token. Uh, I wrote up a little bit of an article over the weekend about some things that I felt like were worth um, exploring on NFTs. So if you just go to tradejournal.co forward slash Winkler or connect, then you can go to Winkler. You can see this latest post here, non-fungible tokens, best NFT stocks. I actually didn't add the stocks yet that I was looking at, uh, but here are a few good videos and articles I would really recommend checking out. Um, and then I'm gonna be adding a third, a one, two, three. I'm gonna add a fourth section here on the stocks I'm looking at. I'll probably be doing that. I was gonna do it this weekend, but I got so carried away on just learning about NFTs and reading articles about NFTs that I didn't actually look into this, the stocks and where I'd wanna buy them. So I apologize for that because I said I was gonna do it. But, <clears throat> you know, sometimes you gotta you gotta go where your, your research takes you. And, and uh, 
if you find a topic kind of interesting, there's no need to, you know, step away from it just yet until you fully explored it. But yeah, I mean, a lot of these plays, we're, we're seeing it. And the reason I'm talking about it uh, is because sometimes when you see these kind of new trends happening, although NFTs aren't exactly new, but right now they're definitely trendy. Um, sometimes you can find one of these leak gappers and it ends up being a multi-month run, right? So which ticker that we're looking at right now has that potential for being a multi-month runner? HOFE is definitely one of the bigger market cap players of it. Mm, I'm actually not sure about that, KO. I know a lot of NFTs do pay royalties. I think it just depends how it's set up. I'm by no means a specialist in NFTs, and it's still kind of over my head. Um, I totally get the concept, but at the same time, I would like to do do a little bit more exploring on my own. It's kind of like with cryptocurrency. Once you kind of bought it, put it in your private wallet, yada, yada, it kind of all makes a little bit more sense. You send some to your friends and you're like, okay, I get it. You know, I feel like I need to do a little bit of that with NFTs, you know, a little bit of what's it called? Learning by doing. Yeah, Jared, that would have been my guess as well, or that was my guess as well, so. But I don't, I don't know if there's like a standard, like if they're all, all like that. I, I would assume not, because it's just smart contracts and it depends how they're set up. And I would assume you could create your NFTs on one of these platforms, like Nifty Gateway, Super Rare, Rarible, OpenSea, Makerspace, Maker's Place, um, and you could set it up however you want it, but I don't know. Oh boy, what a date today, guys. <clears throat> don't forget to drop a like if you haven't done so already. I really do appreciate it. I was a little bit slower this morning. Uh, I was on a fast, and I decided to break it on the stream because I my energy was pretty much at zero. Plus, I didn't really eat much yesterday. I had crazy stomach pains yesterday. I don't know what's going on, man. I've been, I feel like I've been just sick and out of the zone for like the last weeks. But uh, I hope, I hope it, it gets better. I feel like it will. My breathing definitely got better today. I don't know if you guys noticed. HOFE consolidating here back to VWAP. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe it had kind of midday consolidation coming up here and then maybe maybe it runs again because this is a hot ticker right now and I think it could be a great, great hold. I wouldn't be surprised if, let's say, later in this week we saw it chilling at 6. TKAT another nft play holding its highs more of an art play holding its highs so well i mean technically it's all-time high was 40 51 54 but um let's be real here that's just that was a short-term spike it even went higher pre-market but down 37 percent. i just wouldn't be surprised if it broke 25 and maybe went closer to the 9 ema so let's just be a little bit careful here zkin this was a ripper and a half on Friday. This was such a nice ticker. Wow, ZKIN did really, really nice moves today. I was not watching this ticker at all. We traded ZKIN Friday pre-market. I was up 800 something on it, and then I stopped trading. And then I took Friday off. Well, after trading. <laughs> but... SPRT potential backside. Oh yeah, for sure. Just flushed. It's def it's been on the backside. It's been on the backside this whole time. These were all failed moves to the front side. 
yeah, be careful with this one. But at the same time, I'm still kind of optimistic with it. Until we break a new low on this one, let's say past 6.5, I'm still kind of optimistic. All right, take care, Jonathan, man. Stay safe out there. Yes, uh, Stefan, I, you know, I totally agree. Like it's on, on some aspects, it's a little bit hard to wrap your mind around. Like the concept makes sense, but it's like, but why would somebody actually do that? But then at the same time, you know, some of these pieces getting sold are just mind blowing. So you're like, huh, there must be something to it. I don't know. I got to stare at the space longer. You know, if you stare at something long enough, eventually sometimes it makes sense. So. Nice view up. Happy to hear another English Shepherd. Sorry to hear about Shadow. The puppy does sound like good fun. JFI and being halted left and right. I, I think ZKI is really kind of interesting to be watching right now. I'm gonna... Oh, Corey, you're gonna go along this one? This is a casino ticker. This is one of those slot machine tickers in my eyes. <laughs> it's got good energy on it. I'm still kind of fascinated with ZK Ion right now. My stomach cramps are back. I feel it. <clears throat> nice view up. might wrap it up with trading for me honestly I'm getting kind of slower moves I think we might see something pick up later today I think SPRT HOFV I think these are all really hot tickers for late day moves even ZKIN is is kind of looking interesting I just it really depends how long you want to be staring at the charts for since I've been staring at them um, you know I started pre-market trading at seven so you know it's like three and a half hours now I don't like staring at things too long because you get sloppy um, but I think we're having some pretty good setups today because the market open was a little tricky and I feel like sometimes if it's market opens not that hot you get nicer moves HOFE is this the break here? It's kind of has a very light volume. Uh, sell volume has been very, very light, which is kind of bullish sign in terms of, you know, right now it might just be having a healthy pullback consolidation as opposed to proper selling off. So HOFE is definitely a consideration for me. 
Um, you know, it actually started, I think it was like Saturday or something, uh, Romoli. I, I don't remember what I ate, but I think it was some, some light form of food poisoning. Because the last two nights, let's just say the sleeping wasn't very good. And there was a lot of visit, visits to the bathroom. It was pretty painful. <laughs> some good old YouTube conversations. Um, but yeah, I think I do have a light form of food poisoning, which is just what I needed after being exhausted last week and going to the hospital. So it's like, uh, I can't catch a break at the moment. Good point, Bren. He says, uh, consider options. Considering options are up like 15,000% on SPRT, it would be heavily shorted. Check out the dollar volume on SPRT. This is ridiculous. $1.2 billion. It's really not every day we see a ticker over the billion dollar volume mark. So, again, I would really consider this as a... Um, very bullish sign but ultimately it has to get back above VWAP and start trending um, my problem would be these two flushes that we saw here they're just actually we've had one two three four but these two or actually these two right here are to me very prominent because they scare people you know it's like slowly starts moving back to the upside and flushes so let's say we come back here to this zone at 29, everyone's going to be looking at this. Everyone's going to be like, oh man, last time we were here, we went for a nice little roller coaster run. So, free fall. Yeah, Ramoli Hydrate, that's, that's what I've been pretty much just doing. And then today I was like, well, let me do a fast because every time I eat, it's just really bad so I decided to take the today like a little bit of intermittent fasting right just like a 16 hour plus fast which I did I thought I was going to make it till the end of the live stream my fasting but I was like if I don't eat something I might pass out on the live stream <laughs> Jeff, I am absolutely going bonkers right now. Top three lead gappers, guys. What do you think they are? SPRT, HOFV, JFIN. Might be JFIN. I didn't trade JFIN at all, but I know a lot of people are looking at it. I know this is kind of a hot one. We got that big zone here at 13.8 that a lot of people are going to look at. 13.5 may be better. actually really happy that today was Monday I was ready to get back to work resting is exhausting I really try to rest a lot this weekend it was so boring <laughs> I was like okay I can't use the computer what do I do huh, life is difficult 5 10 25 float I still ended up coding it quite a bit though on trade journal over the weekend but not nearly as much as I usually do What's the catalyst on JFI? It's just...
Is it on Wall Street Bets as well? Look at this guy getting a classic financial advice here. Should I buy JFI in at $10? I want to post a question like that on Wall Street Bets. Should I day trade today? Yeah, view up. Ten years worth of X Files. Yeah, sorry to hear, man. That's that's pretty traumatizing. I I feel like I have my own kind of traumatizing phase at the moment. All these all these posts are being removed on JFI and on Wall Street Bets. Technically, JFIN is just about a perfect flag pattern right here. Extremely tempting, but not for me. HOFV back in the game. Is JFIN also an NFT play? I didn't really get the gist of this ticker yet, to be honest. And this website definitely doesn't help. <laughs> W K A I E Y uh, NFT play. I'll look into these uh, later. I'm just writing them down. I see what you guys are writing. I just want to take notes. I don't forget. Volkswagen's got a lot of catch up to do. Heroes. My go to game still is uh, Age of Empires. It just doesn't really get better than that. It does look like good fun. A little tank battles and whatnot. And actually, I don't think I even know this game. I think I've ever played that one. All right, got SPRT, HOFV, JFIN as our lead gappers here today. Um, these are definitely the ones that I found the most interesting. I probably would have wanted to trade GFI in at some point, but to be honest, I wasn't really having the greatest day. And I feel like once I got back in the green after being down, after almost being stopped out for the day, I felt like, okay, you know what? Wrapping it probably is the way to go. So that's why I kind of eased off the throttle a little bit. HOFE was kind of one of my more favorite ones, the way it kind of just was smoothing around here. Finally found that support. We were, this is the area we were talking about where the volume was really light. And we were like, this is a really good sign. 
to see such light volume as it's selling off. It means, you know, it's just healthy consolidation, but there's not a lot of, you know, people fear selling or anything like that. There's not like, you know, hidden sellers dumping into the market or something like that. So, it, so HOFE does feel pretty strong. JFIN is a little bit sporadic and I'd be careful of getting stuck in this one. Looks like 12 right now is, is going to be the potential daily high, but, uh, I don't know, I'll be a little bit on edge with this one. SPRT, still really interesting play. You know, very light on volume right now. I'd be very nervous this ticker just keeps selling off. That's my only worry on this one. Um, otherwise, if it keeps holding this this uh, setup here, you know, SPRT could be a phenomenal midday or power hour kind of play. But for now, it's not interesting and I wouldn't touch it. So that pretty much wraps up today. We're ending the day up $320, which is not bad for the fact that we were down so much. Um, but overall, it was a sloppy day. I gave back tons of profits. Today should have been one of those days where you're up two, three, four, five thousand, or better to say it, over 10% of your average position size. Because today, pre-market, SPRT was one of the nicest pre-market movers we've seen in a long time. And I'm so disappointed in myself for butchering this one. I mean, literally, absolutely butchering it. It runs up 320 something percent. And uh, at this point right here, I'm down 800 something dollars on it. And I'm like, what? So that was pretty embarrassing. But uh, it is what it is. It happens to everyone. Um, yeah. All right, guys, don't forget to do your NFT homework. Um, definitely a lot of research here ahead of us. I don't think this uh, sector is going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Um, and, you know, might as well just be in the know about it. Um, worst case scenario, you don't have to use your knowledge. Best case scenario, you can make a lot of money off of it. So I think it's, it, it's good doing some research. So that's what I'm going to focus a little bit more of my free time on. Yeah, Ramoli, that's, that's how I feel. Green is green. I, I really don't want to complain about it. Like, it's not the, the P&L that I'm really thinking about right now. It's like I'm a little bit disappointed with my trading, um, my execution today. I'm like, I, I just could have done a lot better today. And I think that is what I'm a little bit disappointed in. Other than that, you know, the fact that I was able to dig myself out of a massive hole, um, you know, that's pretty cool. And just literally two, three trades. I'm raised wondering, should I hold SPRT when the market closes or just sell off or just sell off? Uh -huh. You know, it's, that's a really hard question for me to answer because I don't even know what, what I would do. I, I pretty much, you know, when I was analyzing this one said, I would, I would not trade it right now and I would wait for, you know, some momentum to come back into this play. Otherwise, I'm not really sure if I, if I would touch it. I don't really fully understand. The, the news is very hard to wrap your mind around, merger news. Um, but it looks like it's it's priced in a little bit at this point. So I, I, I'm not sure if we're going to see this thing rip past 10 today. Who knows? We might. This was a huge move on this ticker. So anything's possible. HMBL. I was just wondering, Jared. What's HMBL tick, uh, hashtag stand for? I feel like this is bad for asking, but I don't know what it is. Let's see if I can take a guess what it what it is based on what we're seeing here. Oh, if anyone doesn't uh, follow me on Twitter, check me out at Mr. Alex Winkler. Um, my name is right here, somewhere here. <clears throat> my username. I do post a lot more on Twitter than I do on Instagram. 
um, of just kind of what's going on, some thoughts and just general, especially music. I do post a lot of that. Last few weeks I didn't post a lot of music, but usually I do. And I'm still not really sure which HMBL stands for. I'm always wondering, do I? Man, there's a lot of distracting stuff being called out right now at once. TKAT, let me just pull it up. While, oh yeah, this thing's flying. Look at that. Today's a hot day, guys. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, is just waiting for its time to shine right now. It's freaking, freaking hectic. Today was really a day I, I should have even went harder, but oh well. Happy to hear, Menaj. That's cool. Welcome to the community. It's a, it's a wild one for sure. Life will never be the same. Ramoli's wondering, do I look at my previous best trades from the past couple of weeks um, where you made good trades? Uh, yes and no. Like I, I study my past trades all the time. I document my trades every morning, um, each trade by trade by trade, not like importing my CSV file and just being done with it. You know, I, I review each one. I make a note on each one. Um, and then I do my monthly recaps, but I don't usually look at like my top 20 trades in the last, let's say, rolling 60 days or something like that. Maybe that's actually an interesting thing to start doing, just to constantly keep an eye on the best trades, the best setups, whatever works. That That's actually not a bad idea. It's, it's an interesting thing to think about, Ramoli. Especially because you could read your notes and think exactly what you were thinking back then. Yeah, Daniel, I'm actually, uh, to be honest, my v VWAP was default TOS. So if you're using TOS, just delete your VWAP and re-add it, and it might solve that situation. Velocity is wondering, how do I make the vo volume graph? I'm not really sure. How are you talking about this one? You can separate it by going to um, chart settings and then you go to appearance. No, wait, that's not true. You go to general and then you go to overlap volume. You make sure it's unselected because if it is selected, it's gonna look like this and I'm not gonna like you for that because it's so hectic. Oh my God, just look at it, it hurts my face. All right, let's go back here to overlap volume. And then if you want the mixed volume, just go in the discord under the uh, thinkorswim TD Ameritrade uh, broker, and you can see the information on how to do the mixed volume. Mm, I could go for some schnitzels as well, Grillo. Actually, that sounds delicious. TKAT is on fire right now. What the heck? Holy moly. Yo, this ticker is going to freaking fall so hard at one point. NFT guys, this is really no time to not like not get aggressive on NFTs. Just you find the one that's trending the hardest, maybe, and then you know maybe find the top three that you like. Find some bigger support and accumulate on support and hold for a multi-week, multi-month setup. I don't know. I'm not saying do it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do my research and then I might do it. And if I do do it, you guys will know obviously because I. I share all my day trades and swing trades here. Yeah, I was actually thinking HOFE was going to go to six. Six is my big target on HOFE short term. So I think it's going to see it today still. I don't know. You never really know. It really depends if it holds this area. If it breaks below four, six, I probably wouldn't be as optimistic. Um, although. This is a really nice flag pattern and it's just an extended pattern possibly. So we might still see a really good late day movement above 5.3. Maybe it's gonna be a power hour session. I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. Yeah, TKAT's on fire.
I'm not sure, Jared. I'm not really sure. I think governments could use it for that at one point, and I think that'd be quite interesting. I feel like that actually makes a lot more sense than what it's being used for right now. I just, sometimes I'm a little bit unsure um, of all this, uh, what borderline feels like nonsense around the NFT, kind of what's being actually, it's actually being used for, but, you know, sometimes things start a bit weird before they, you know, start getting used for concrete services. Plus, if you think about it, you know, the last thing governments want to do is, is you know, fix something that isn't broken. And yeah, obviously, you know, copyrights, trademark patents, that could all be more efficient, but, you know, they're not going to jump on some new technology, right? You know, look how long it took to, you know, pay the IRS on, on lines instead of freaking mailing it in. So it's just, you know, I would, I would give the government quite a bit of time before that takes place. Shiz, Shiz 1E, you know, I'm never trying to be blindly optimistic. And most times when people ask me about a ticker, I'm, you know, probably overly pessimistic. But I don't know. I, I still feel like HOFE has a shot, a shot at six. There's big resistance at six. I wouldn't be surprised if it touched it. But maybe it's it's not going to reach six. And it's going to reach like 590 or something like that. I, I don't know. But um, I, I still think that's where we're going to see today. But I could be wrong. You never really know what's going to happen, right? Yeah, Jared, I think it's it's potentially likely, but the problem with the government is they, they lose a little bit of the control, right? So they might not be so interested in going blockchain. Yeah, VWAP, I got the, my blue line is the nine EMA and that's actually it. Um, I have VWAP here and the two deviations of VWAP on the higher and lower end. And then on the daily chart, I have the 180-day simple moving average. That's it. Um, Chris is wondering about BBVA and EWMC. Good for long term. Mm. BB. Why is it not popping up? Uh, I can't really comment on the first one. I have not ever in, in, uh, analyzed it. Bank diversified Spain company, big sell off today. You know, there's been some upgrades on different agencies. That's not bad. They pay a 5% dividend, that's pretty G. So that's that's a really nice dividend. Looks like there's a chance that it's gonna get back above six and maybe crawl, but you know, anytime you can you know buy at a lower price relative to what it was the last maybe week, and it's still in the uptrend, you know, typically that's a good buying opportunity. But again, I don't know anything about this ticker, so I can't really comment on that. Well, it seems like Verdun, the director, bought at almost $8 a bunch of shares, so he's pretty optimistic on the ticker, so that's a good sign. Not a big fan of how this one trades. Um, day trading, it seems a little bit... Well, it actually kind of works a little bit slow, but okay. 
big resistance right around 10. Failed breakout here, and it, it didn't even make the breakout here, so I'm not too optimistic. BBVA, one of the biggest banks in Spain and Latin America, yeah. Again, I haven't really looked into the company so much, so I can't really comment on that. But it looked like they were in a nice little uptrend and they're having a nice daily pullback. So it could be could be a good play for sure. Plus a 5% dividend is not bad. And we know the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up around 6% for the year. So clearly value stocks are appreciating much better than NASDAQ, which is only up around 2% for the year as of the weekend so now it's more like three four percent so you know values is is definitely from what it seems like the way to go this year so you know any high dividend decent entry plays is going to be probably a good play Yeah, Alessander, we use Weeble. Um, I use it for my investments more just so they're out of my TD Ameritrade. I, I like Weeble, it's nice, but I'm not a big fan for day trading. It seems a little bit slower than TD Ameritrade. But, you know, whatever works for you guys, you know, it's all about personalities and preferences. And it's like very subjective topic sometimes. Yeah, Velocity. Um, just go to that Discord, man, tradejournal.co forward slash connect. You can see the Discord link there. Uh, Reites pay some fat daddy dividends sometimes. You're just taxed a little bit more heavy, so just keep that in mind. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap up pretty soon here. Um, don't forget, you could drop me an email anytime, alex at tradejournal.co, or you could just email me or um, find me in the Discord, and um, that is where... I answer a bunch of questions as well. <clears throat> Otherwise, that pretty much wraps up the day. Small green day today, um, but you know it's fine because we really had to dig ourselves out of the red. Don't forget, I'm gonna timestamp all of these. I timestamp all of my live streams, so when you come back in about you know two hours or so the whole thing is gonna be timestamped. So if you guys do, you know, miss a live stream and you watch it on playback, you will have, um, you know, it'll be quicker to skip around. I'm gonna, I always timestamp all the important topics when I enter a trade or something like that, uh, important topics discussed or, you know, the sort. Yeah, SPRT still selling off. This is a critical spot, it's coming up to six, seven. I wouldn't really want it to break it too much. It's gonna be a big double bottom potential there, so. I think if it breaks that, then I might be seeing six very soon from there on out. <laughs> it's a monster. You hear that, Brent? It's a, it's a monster. I hear those microfinancings do great, great work for the world. Um, they actually really come in clutch, especially for um, females, because they handle the micro loans much better than males. Um, it's actually really funny. I read a whole article about it, how, how the distribution works with microfinancing. That was years ago when I read that, but it's a good eye opener.
Yeah, pretty much, VWAP. That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah, Brent, that's 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 super awesome. I I wish I could jump on that bandwagon. Um, Hofe, look at this one. It's trying here. Had a new high day, so we might be seeing that six. Oh lord, four percent move. I honestly, I should have bought that pullback right there instead of just talked about it. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, like always, stay safe, make some awesome trades. Um, I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning as well. Um, and if you're totally new here, remember, we actually start the YouTube early, early, and I'm usually trading starting at 7. So this chat room is open pretty much all day or all morning. Um, so if you guys want to jump in early and see what we're trading, uh, just you know check out the channel, and you'll see the pending stream and just go to it ahead of time, and you'll see us all chatting there. Very chill stream today. It was it was m mellow, wasn't it? Stay humble, that's good. Yep, we have a nice little green day after, after crawling ourselves out of a giant hole, so I'm happy for that, you know? Peace out, guys. I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao.